All right. I think you can hear me. Uh, so this is we've been on a little hiatus. <laughs> So, um, sup, fake McCoy, hey, light hands. Uh, so you guys probably know because you guys are in the Discord. But for anyone who doesn't know, uh, we've been on a little hiatus. Uh, the reason for that is because I switched from my, you know, ten plus year old Mac to a PC. And when that happens, there are a few hiccups. And uh, since I was going to embrace those hiccups, I figured, why don't we just change everything? Um, I started to, uh, in addition to changing from Mac to PC, um, which will change the layout of the keyboard, which will change, like, basically all my muscle memory is shot. Uh, not only that, but like I also changed the screen protector on my Wacom Cintiq, uh, Wacom Cintiq, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I used to have, <clears throat> excuse me, I used to have an anti-glare uh, Cintiq screen, and I went from and it had like this like tooth to it, and uh, it was kind of foggy, and so I went to like a crystal clear screen, and the problem with that is that. Uh, the crystal clear, the crystal clear screen is like tacky. It like, um, yeah, you know, so fake McCoy said in the chat, uh, if I'm looking for technical feedback, which I am because I'm tr we're trying to get this stream. It looks like my face cam could use slightly more focus if it's capable of that. It's not like, I don't know what it, what the deal is. Like it's the same tech. It's the same hardware, but like. For some reason, this, this, the way that I'm running it, it's like, it's struggling. Um, I don't know if there's like, I've been like trying to tweak it, trying to download things, watching a lot of vids, like trying to get everything, trying to get everything for the stream in order. And this is like the best I could do. <laughs> so maybe we need a new camera. I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, at any rate, so. I put this crystal clear screen protector on the Cintiq and one of the things that uh, I did not foresee happening with the crystal clear is that um, it's like tacky when you drag your hand across it. Like your, your hand will move across it like a window, like it'll be like, da -da 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 -da, you know, like tap. Um, so you don't get like nice smooth lines. So I ended up doing something that I did not want to do, which is get, get one of these. <laughs> This is like a little two finger glove. I I feel like they are the most pretentious digital art thing, but it goes on your hand like this. And it allows you to like lay your hand on the screen and for it to be like semi, you know, frictionless. And this thing is like, you know, I don't know, five bucks on Amazon or something like that. Eight bucks. Uh it's super annoying. It feels weird in my hand. So like, not only am I like trying to get used to switching from PC to Mac or Mac to PC, but I'm also trying to get used to like putting a glove on my hand and like, I, you know, like the, the, I changed the tip in my pen to like this felt tip thinking that like maybe the felt will like change the grit or something of the screen and it would feel like the old screen, but it still doesn't really. And so now I'm just kind of like, I don't know, taking on like all the problems at once. So this rambling whole thing, just to say, we might be slower than I normally am. And it might be like that for a little while as I slowly get used to uh, working on the PC. Um, Cave Carson has an interstellar eye. Number one came out last week. Uh, the realm trade paperback came out, uh, this week suffering for my art. Exactly. Pop. <laughs> I'm suffering to like make a better product. I, I want like, a you know, better situations in the future. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but we should get into like, we should actually like start doing shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so with that in mind, here we are. Uh, 
This is by uh, Declan, and I always butcher his last name. Shalvi? I think it's Shalvi. In my mind, I add like four extra syllables, but his info is all right down here. Right here. Um, down at the bottom there. Uh, I haven't, like, the the ad space up, up top there, where I see the uh, Angel City trade paperback. I haven't updated it for the realm and uh, Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye yet. Um, it's just like, it's on my to-do list, man. And it is crazy. My to-do list is crazy. So the first thing you're going to notice with uh, Declan's work here is that he's like grayscale like crazy. Like we don't have a lot of, uh, yeah, this is a great drawing. Declan's super fucking talented. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, I got to work with him on 28 Days Later like a while ago. A long, long, long while ago. It's too late, Matt. I've already panicked. Um, so we'll talk, we'll talk about that. But first I want to talk about this. So a lot of times when uh, you are trying to find something on the internet to color and... Um, yeah, so he does stream, which is uh, it's tough to tell when the light when the light is over here. But like, if you see my mouse down here, I actually added his Twitch TV down here. Part of the reason why why I wanted to do this because like he started streaming, and he should all of everybody who is seeing this should go follow him as well because uh, his streams are also awesome. I think he also ports them over to YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, do a search, find him, start following him. All of my subscribers should also be all of his subscribers as well <laughs> uh yeah so uh at any rate a lot of times on the internet like i don't know what size this is actually yeah we're at a good size uh what are we in inches yeah eight and a half by 11 400 dpi yeah it's decent this is a decent size but if you get something that you downloaded from the internet uh, like a page that um <laughs> I brought up my cool drawing glove. So if you download a page from the internet, like when we did the Johnny Lighthands review, he wasn't knocking out a lot of line art. Um, he and I talked about it afterwards in the Discord, which you should hop into the Discord because uh, even though I've been gone for like 20 days, which is crazy, uh, I've also been active in the Discord and we've been talking and, and sharing art and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, what happened to my wrist is now I'm a winter soldier. That's exact. It's like metallic in here, but only in here. Um, so, uh, yeah, we started talking about like his portfolio review, which was the last stream that we did. And, um, he was saying that he didn't knock out a lot of line art because the line art that he had was like low resolution stuff and you can't like really threshold it you know, you're, you're in that kind of boat and we can't threshold this. So I want to like try to, uh, you should get a robot arm crowdfund a robot arm. I would love a robot arm. Can I get a third arm? That would be fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to handle this stuff. This is kind of how I handle the realm because Jeremy has a lot of like subtlety in his line that is, uh, oftentimes gray and I don't want to lose that. So Here's what we're going to do. We're going to kick it over to CMYK. Um, and we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. Just select all, copy. We're going to throw it into a new layer. Now we're going to take this layer and we're going to fill it with uh, our super black 60, 60, 40, 100. Excuse me. Um, just black. So you see it, you see down here in the lower right, we got uh, the line art on the bottom and then layer one is is just a black layer and we are just going to make a, a Mask and here we are in the mask settings and we are just going to paste the line art in now I'm gonna click over and you might think hey, we're done. The mask is in it's, it's gonna be black where the black is It's gonna be light where the light is, but that uh, actually isn't true because uh, we'll add It actually works the mask is going to work opposite. Um, 
Oh, you're gonna you're gonna post a lot of flatted stuff in the Discord soon. That's awesome, Matt Garvey. Uh, yeah, I know that Johnny was excited to get the Killing Joke pages. So there's stuff in the Discord to practice with too. So if you are into that, you can just pop in the Discord. You don't have to talk to me. You don't. You don't have to. You can just pop in, get some pages, pop out. But I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna. So you can go back into, if you just click Alt while you click the mask, it will select the mask. Um, and you just invert it. So now where these like white parts are, are going to be our mixture of 60, 60, 40, 100, our super black. Um, and we retain the original image. So now on this, on this bottom layer, we can just fill. And we filled the whole, we filled the whole screen here. Oh, pop! You subscribed. Thank you for the three months. You're sticking with me through the hiatus. I appreciate that. Uh, the alerts are not up yet. <laughs> We're very bare bones right now. I have like two scenes and like nothing else. <laughs> um. So yeah, so like this is the way that I would recommend to do it, and um, the reason for that is that you can uh, knock out the line art. So I don't know if we're gonna do a whole lot of knocking out the line art on this because it doesn't really need it. Maybe on the star. Um, <laughs> Boyks resubscribed for six six whole years. Wow, an, an incredible feat. Um, so yeah, so you can, if you look down here, like I'm on the black layer and we just put down like a sheet of black. But if you if you take like any other color and brush it down it's gonna it's gonna brush down in that color and it's gonna add like you know the grays in here are now like light blue it's it's hard to tell because we did this like red but like here's like blue and light blue and like it's picking up the grays in there um and <laughs> It didn't announce, announce your subscription. Well, thank you for your subscription to Fake McCoy. Um, so yeah, it, it like it, it's easy to get um, this kind of stuff going. It's it's like it's a it looks super technical, but like once you do it once or twice, uh, it's it's very easy to remember. It's very it's your it's gonna be your go to. Um, uh, what, what were we doing? 60, 60, 40. My mind still says 80, 60, 40, uh, cause I'm an old man, but yeah. So like, this is kind of how I do it. Now, the tricks that I told you about flatting, you can't really do a whole lot of those. Like, cause you know, you're dealing with all the grays and everything. And like, you know, you just gotta like flat the whole thing yourself. Like you just gotta lasso it, suck it up and do it which is a, a little bit obnoxious, but um, you're here with me, chat, and we're gonna start flatten this th flattening this thing. Flattening, flatting, flat, I don't know, I don't know. Look, man, it's my first stream back. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Uh, also, you guys are gonna get to see, in addition to like everything that I'm getting used to, um, <laughs> I don't even know my own verbs. Not not anymore, man. I'm too focused on like. Uh, thank you for joining us, McComiker. Uh I'm too focused on like trying to get my shit together with this. Uh, with this switch to the to the PC. In addition, so like, here's something that um I didn't realize. So if you remember um. I recommended uh, getting a spider and like uh, for I think for um, most of the portfolio reviews we did we've done oh hey Declan yeah uh, you were trying to color your sketches last week and you couldn't really figure out how to colorize the wash without having any K in there this is how you do it um, yeah you just you just kind of like set it up as a reverse mask and then and then you can just like colorize like crazy like we'll, we'll throw a color through this thing like that <laughs> it's kind of like yeah 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 it's it's once you like 
when I would hear people explain the mask thing, by the way, um, I was like, I don't like all of this sounds super technical and overwhelming. And I was like, I kind of understand what's going on. But like once I started to just like do it a few times, um, it like it clicks, you know, like you do it a couple times and then you're like, oh, this is this is just this is just what you do. Um, I saw that you were you were coloring some of your sketches. Are you uh, are you spreading your wings? Are you getting into getting into coloring? I think that'd be awesome. I I feel like art is moving in or comic art is moving in a direction where like slowly everybody's just doing their own thing. Um, like full full art you know like pencils inks colors everything uh it feels that way anyway to me i've talked about this before about how like you know we don't really there's like still some inkers but not a ton of inkers anymore and it's because people just started inking themselves um and i feel like the same thing is going to happen with uh color um doing just one thing doesn't pay enough anymore. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's like just a straight up economic thing. Um, everybody moving towards one stop shopping. Not me. You refuse to color. You should try it, man. You might like it. Uh, do you think that's because it's all done digitally? It might be, partly because of that okay this is this is my two cents on like why i think that's happening um we, we gotta we gotta lasso out all these plants um the reason that uh i think it i think it has to do with digital but i also think that it has to do with a so when i i'm born on like the first year of millennials like so I'm like technically a millennial and we're going to, we're going to make large sweeping judgments about millennials in like a second. And, um, uh, it's not going to, we're not, we're going to keep all the avocado jokes to ourselves because they're all played out. Um, but we're going to talk about like one of the great things about millennials is that they take the technology super fucking well. Um, considering trying to do some watercolor too. Yeah, man. You're like, if, if you're thinking about um, just been meaning to experiment more, haven't taken the time. Dude, so um, millennials are, are ruining making fun of millennials. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I part of the part of the reason that uh, I do this stream is just so that I carve out a little bit of time to experiment all the time. Um, like we don't necessarily like. Like I did a little bit of digital painting on the stream before we went on hiatus. Um, I think that experimentation is fun and uh, will grow you as an artist. But holy shit, does the the like comic schedule, the comic professional schedule, will like crush all of that out of you? You know, it like you you're like oh god I can't experiment. I got to get these pages out now. And then you're like. I need a break. And then you're like, Oh God, we're, we're in the crunch again. Um, <laughs> I hope you're ready for your millennialness. <laughs> Heroes. Yeah, I can handle it. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not. No. So this is the thing. This is one of the great things about millennials is that they take the technology super well. And that I feel like a lot of the people who are making art as millennials are, and like this younger generation of comic artists that are coming up, um, are figuring out color at the same rate that they figure out like how to draw. Like, I think it's like the same breath for them. And part of the reason that I think that that's the way it is, is because like the tech got better and it's like more accessible to people. Um, so millennials had it at a young age, whereas like, uh, <laughs> Oh God, the chat. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know why I I invite this into my life. The chat. <laughs> Back in the old days when you were doing sketch blogs, you experimented a lot. 
but it's uh really helped you develop more as a result yeah like i think too that like we're, we're kind of having two conversations at once here um i think too when you stop like experimenting and growing like you run the risk of like being stagnant and if you run if you're stagnant for too long as an artist you run the risk of being um like not able to get back into to like if you're stagnant for too long you run the risk of like not being able to change at all and then like like with any any industry like changes happen and like you may be like oh man i wish i could do this but i'm an old man now and i can't change and i'm just going to keep doing the things that i'm doing and that's like not where you want to be headspace wise um i don't think it's where you want to be headspace wise in like life but that's just just me um tough to do it with the regular grind yeah i know that's why i'm like you know i'm like we're streaming let's experiment you know uh so yeah so millennials grew up with this tech whereas like so when i was growing up in the 80s like i there wasn't any like like comic coloring wasn't even like on my radar um digital lets you make a lot of mistakes and experiment too yeah uh like I was like, oh, I love comics. I'm going to draw. And, like, that's what that meant to me. There wasn't, like... I didn't know any colorists' names. Like, I was I was reading comics and I knew who, like, you know, Sam Keith was. And, like, uh, Rob Schrab. And, like, you know, like, these, these comic guys that I really loved. Um, but, like, now, as coloring kind of, like, grew into its own kind of thing um like millennials are growing up in the same boat but they're seeing work by like you know matt wilson and they're seeing work by like like matt and i've been doing this for 15 years and then like before we were doing it like um you know dave stewart was doing it and so i think i feel like millennials grew up looking at color as not part of like a separate thing like they're seeing it as like oh comics is all one thing like we pencil we ink we color and then i feel like internet culture reinforces that in a huge way i feel like um when you post something online if it's in color you get more of a reaction to it. So like any millennial that's like looking to get into comics and like has the inclination is going to be like, Oh, I'll just, I'll do all the steps. Cause this is in my mind. What comics is it's like a finished thing. And then like, I'll do that, put it online. And Oh, I get a lot of reaction when I do it in color. So I'm going to keep doing it in color. And then they grow their skills at the same rate as they grow their skills for like penciling and inking. Whereas like Declan and I, Oh, Hey Erica, what's up? I saw you flatten. I see, I see you working out there. Um, Erica also streams. You can, you can click her name and follow her as well. Uh, yeah. So I feel like I, I see, whereas like Declan and I started drawing and like kind of did that. And then, Declan, Declan draw, drew as his career. And I realized my palette was better when I get, uh, when I got like, you know, out of college and I needed money cause college is expensive. And then, um, I, uh, like grew my ability as a, as a colorist. Um, and I think that the way millennials approach approaching comics is like, Let's just do the whole thing. And I think that we saw it with inking. I think that people in uh, that are as old as me um, in their mid thirties uh, saw inking as the same way. Like, well, I don't want to stop just at pencils. I want to do the whole thing. You know, I think that uh, 
the same thing is going to happen with coloring. I, I, you know, I really, really feel like, but do they, can they do the whole thing and meet deadlines? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the million dollar question, but like, will, I mean, that question is predicated on like, you know, assuming, um, Oh, good. Good comic sword. <laughs> Everybody should should be doing uh, sequential coloring instead of pinups. Yeah, I saw Light Hands do a couple of pinups and I was like, all right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like that that idea of like, can they do it and meet deadlines is predicated on an idea like the old weekly warrior idea of like, yeah, like Batman needs to come into the shop every week, but like, what if comics changes? You know, like, what if we move towards a format of like, you know, like, what if the what if the system what if Diamond like falls apart? Like, what if uh, shops start closing down? What if the best way to get comics is to get like this? The this is like a a library kind of edition. This is um, Krogan's Loyalty, which is which is flipped. Um, I actually uh, I picked this up. Oh, it's green, so it's 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 kind of it's kind of struggling. This is like a hardcover. Uh, this is by Oni Press. Uh, Chris Schweitzer does the art. This is old Chris Schweitzer. Um, I picked this up because my uh, nephew, who's eight. Uh, started getting this from the library and I wanted to also read it. Uh, so yeah, like what if, what if this is the format that's the future? What if we start just putting out hardcovers and like the, the weekly warrior, like 20 pages a month or 22 pages a month or whatever, like starts to become, you know, the, not the norm anymore what if that's like the niche product um then it's like oh you do your pages you turn them in and then once we have a, f a final product we put it out there you know like the truth is is that like this space of comics that we're talking about where like you know the libraries are involved and uh we're talking about dis different distribution than just like we're talking about bookstores and we're not talking about um comic shops anymore is like really new. Um, you love the creator that? Yeah, Schweitzer's great. Um, I thought it was really interesting um, uh, that like my my nephew, sorry, I was reading chat, uh, that my nephew like wandered into a, a local library and picked uh, uh, Schweitzer's stuff up because like I'm such a fan and I was like, shit, man, I should, I should pick up what, I don't have what he's reading. I'll, I might as well get it. Um, chat, chat's got, I'm going to catch up on chat. Uh, I'm actually complimenting millennials. Yes. Uh, pinups will get back in the swing of things, test some stuff. Yeah. Good man. Um, uh, Schweitzer has an awesome Patreon. Yes, he does. We could, we can, we can uh, call out, call out Schweitzer's Patreon. He does like um, paper figures, which like used to be a thing. I think before I was a kid, uh, of like historical heroes, which is like, which is really neat. Um, yeah, his Patreon's great. Uh, at any rate. What was I? What was I saying? What were we talking about? Oh, how millennials are coming for us all. Um, yeah. So like, here's the thing: is like, I feel like the the shift is gonna happen that we see with inkers, with colorists, where like, it's not gone, but it's like, you know, just not necessarily the same as it used to be. Um, it used to be back in the day, like inkers were a staple and like you paired up an inker like colorists pair up with line artists and i feel like once we get to the point where you know the format of comics changes which is possible then we're gonna see like shifts in how they're made um 
part of the reason why I'm doing the sketchbook challenge is not only for my own, um, and we're not worried about color right now, by the way, we're just putting down flats. Um, not only for my own enjoyment, but also for um, my own job security. <laughs> like I gotta get, I get, I am like seeing this on the horizon and I'm like, well, time to innovate and change. Like time to like start um, doing my own thing. Um, so you guys will still have a job. <laughs> yeah, that millennial, that millennial sucks at color. So my job is secure for now. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's things will change and I am, uh, trying to decode what is going on here. I think that's like a separate section. And then he has like a holster here. So I guess we'll make the holster the same color as this. Am I sampling all layers with the eyedropper? Point sample, sample, current layer. There we go. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. It's really exciting right now in comics because like, I feel like there's a, oh, we'll save, sure. Um, I feel like there's a lot of change on the horizon. Um, Jim Palmiotti said that's what got him focusing on writing. He saw the writing on the wall with inking. Yeah, man, like you can feel these things coming and it's, it's like, you know, are you going to, are you, do you have the wherewithal to do something about it? Or do you just going to like stick your head in the sand and like blame everyone around you for like taking your, taking your jobs? Or like it's you know what are you gonna do? So like I I was looking at this this problem I guess problem quote unquote um, of like you know our colorists potentially could be starting to go away as people like like I don't think that you know like Jen Bartel for ex is a great example of this. She's younger than I am. Um, she is extremely talented and she uh, colors in addition. She's the whole, whole package. Uh, Mitch Jarrett is all the same way, same way. Um, he's not younger than me. I don't think I, I actually don't know. He might be the beard throws me off, but uh, yeah, he's the same way. It's like, I, I feel like these people that are the exception now are not going to stay the exception. I feel like, in the future, it's going to be um, making art. Fiona Staples, same way. Fiona Staples is a perfect example because when you see her art, like you see that like she's melding color in a way where she's not like she's not like oh we're gonna do pencils and then we're gonna do inks and then we're gonna do Mitch is a wizard. It doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like Fiona, like she, like when you see her stuff, it's not like, oh, she did pencils as a distinct step, inks as a distinct step, colors as a distinct, you know, like it looks like she just, she just like goes, you know what I mean? Like she's, it looks like, I mean, like, I don't know. This is from my point of view of like seeing her work. So I don't know if this is necessarily true, but like, it looks like she sketches it out digitally. Um, and then from there, like blocks it out with color and then like adds detail in, like attacks it like a painting. And she is knowledgeable enough in like the language of comics to be like, okay, what needs to be inked in order to, um, you know, read like a comic in order to read well because you see you see it all the time with like digital painters who like have never made comics and then it's like this this dense freaking uh uh you know pages that are like almost unreadable because they're like painting everything like she knows enough about comics and the language of comics to not do that um I'm going to catch up on chat here. Um, 
Marguerite comes to mind too. Yeah. This idea of pushing a single hardcover instead of issues intrigues you for sure. Yeah. Uh, the Zub's skull kickers is another example. There's tons of examples. Like I feel like the everybody knows it right now, or at least suspects it feels it. Um, you're starting to push uh, digital painters on comics. Found a couple that that would be cool to work with. Yeah, man. Uh, just keep them, keep them reined in. Keep it, keep it. Uh, you know, able to to read. Um, part of why I decided started writing was that uh, you didn't want to be dependent on so many other people to hire you to draw. Fuck, dude, you're like speaking my language right now as well as broadening your skill set as a storyteller. I think artists uh, started to ink, have more control over the final product. Now colorists are the inkers of the old. Yeah, for sure. A next logical step is for artists to color themselves. Yeah, and the uh, the other logical step is for colorists to start making their own art. Um, but like, oh man, do I feel you with the with the uh, wanting more agency over like what you what you are working on? Um, it's once you get like, so for anybody out there who doesn't, doesn't know, and I'm not, I'm not bagging on, uh, or ragging on, uh, you know, DC Marvel, uh, work at all. Like, uh, I work on DC Marvel stuff. Uh, I work on a lot of like cool stuff, but like when I was midway through my career, it was just like whatever scraps they gave me, you know, <laughs> like, and you know, it, it was fine. Like I hadn't proven myself yet. And like, um, uh, yeah. You like the idea of coloring your own covers, but not a whole book. Yeah. I get that. Um, the sequential artist really involves storytelling. Yeah. Writing is the next natural step. Yep. Yep. Uh, agency. Exactly. Uh, you kind of want to go the other other way on that and draw for a paycheck. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not bagging drawing for a paycheck. What I'm saying is is like, you know, when I started in comics and I was like, okay, I I want to do comics and the bar that I want to hit is Marvel DC work, you know? Like that's that's where I want to go. How do I get there? Okay, we're going to start start bottom, go up. Eventually I hit the Marvel DC work and then I was like, well, now what, you know? And for a long time, I kind of like wandered around. Like I was just kind of like doing what they gave me kind of like, yeah, like stuff that some of the stuff that I wasn't like super excited about, but like still try to do a great job on, but like felt like I didn't have agency over like, what I was doing. And, um, I feel like that, that is like a rough feeling. And it's also a rough feeling when you are trying to like make something or you have an idea for something and you're like, I, I want to do it this way. And like, you have to, you have to be like, well, I have to wait until, you know, the character Wolverine is available to do this Wolverine story. And so like, Maybe when the movie stuff like, like kind of like, you know, checks out that or like stops or, or whatever, then like uh, Wolverine will become available. But he's involved in this crossover event right now. So I can't write that Wolverine. And it like turns into this thing where you're like in the corporate machine and it's like, well, OK, so if I'm not going to do Wolverine right now, then I guess I'm just going to do something else. And then it's like, man, I just I really want to do you really want to just like work on the stories you want to work on, you know? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's like a, it's a complex dance between like your own happiness and what you love and having agency over that and also doing freelance work. And, um, it's tough. Uh, and I feel like eventually you get to a point, not where you're like, you know, I don't want to do work for Marvel and DC or DC, but you get to a point where you're like, I want to do specific work for Marvel and DC. And if I can't do that specific work, then like maybe I'll look around at like image books or uh, talk to other writers as far as my options go. And like, this is, 
this is the crux of what what I'm talking about. Like, so you start thinking like that, and then you're like, well, why do we have to make issues at all? Like, why don't we just come out with graphic novels? Um, I know that I just you know said through DC and Marvel under the bus for this, but now I will compliment DC for saying that like, hey, you know the Mr. Miracle stuff that Mitch is doing right now is really great. Why are we going to come out with six issues in a trade? That's only half the story. We're just going to wait till 12 and then put it all together. Um, I don't know. It's it's, and I feel like that's a smart move. Um, let me catch up on chat. You kind of want a metal arm now. <laughs> uh, I constantly think about, how I wish I had a story in my head to write, like uh, Declan said. Yeah, so you can give yourself something to draw. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's going to be, you know, like whether or not you're like able to do that too. Um, but I think that if you are an artist with like uh, a fire in you for a specific thing, like I'm waiting to, to for Marvel and DC to like let you do that thing is going to be frustrating. Um, I don't know. I have, I have a couple, I have some pitches that I, that I really want to do, uh, with Marvel DC, but like, it's going to be a long, long, hard road before I get there. Um, are we done? I had so much more to talk to you guys about. This is why I haven't streamed in a while. And, uh, I've wanted, I've, I've got a lot, I've got a lot to say. <laughs> uh, you do think there's a way to do crossover as well? Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm not, I'm not, look, man, like, this is the thing, is, like, I'm not bagging on crossovers or, like, you know, I'm just saying different artists at different points in their career, like, want to um, carve out different things. And, like, you get to points in your career where you're like, okay, I, I like this, but, like, what what how do i grow how do i move on from here um from the outside it sounds like the spot sean murphy's in they carved out himself with with white knight for sure like he just got to do what he wants to do and that's great but like we're also and this is what i was going to say too is that like um you had a great story about a cooking robot but somebody beat you to it yeah uh you were trying to pitch that to someone at Marvel and they got, you got a very strange look. Yeah. I thought I heard that they're only collecting Mir uh, Mr. Miracle after 12, like the whole thing all in one, um, which I think is kind of great because not only a, so I picked up the first three and then I was going to pick up the trade cause I fell behind. And now that I know that I'm not actually that behind, I kind of want to pick up the issues now. So, I mean, may, maybe that's the way to do it. I, I don't know. Um, uh, once again, you can barely out of the combo. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine, Erica. Yeah. Uh, feel free to soak it up like a sponge. <laughs> um, yeah, they're going to do the whole series as a hardcover like they did with Sheriff of Babylon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the thing, too, is, like, I picked up the first Sheriff trade, and... I was like, that was cool, but like, it wasn't like the whole thing. And now I'm like, oh, I got to get the second trade. And then like, I didn't get to the shop for a while. And then I was like, and then it's like out of my mind. And it's like, well, fuck man. I would have just picked up the whole thing all at once. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but like, okay. So this is the, this is the thing with the, the Sean Murphy comment is that like, while having the agency to be like to go to dc and be like hey give me batman i'm gonna do whatever i want i'm gonna write it write it and draw it is like like so crazy to think about that like i feel like only artists who are at the top of their game are able to do that um and this boils down to like what i was saying before about like having agency and mobility and like that kind of thing is like our colorists going to go away entirely no absolutely not there's always going to be colorists but like 
if I am not the best comic book colorist in the industry, it's going to get harder and harder for me to compete with the best color colorists in the industry. Um, and if uh, the, the thing that's going to help me not have to compete with them is to get my art chops up and then just be my own artist, you know, be my own writer, be my, like get all those chops, like just have agency over like what I do, you know, um, you prefer what they did with the vision two, two trades, one hardcover. Yeah. It gives readers different options. Sure. Sure. Um, you think that's brilliant? Not every, not every book of course, but yeah, the book specifically. Yeah. It makes total sense with Mr. Miracle. Like, just put it all together. I don't know. Like that's, that's what I want. Um, maybe just a hardcover would have been better. Yeah. Sean is the 1% of our, yeah, exactly. The rest of us. It's like, Oh, I'll just do what Sean Murphy does. Oh, done deal. <laughs> it's like, no man, you can be, this is the thing is like, you could be in the top 3% of artists and be like riding high and not get to do that. Like, I don't even think necessarily that Sean is going to get to do that forever. You know, like I think right now he is able to, uh, and like, he's going to have to, you know, yeah, just do what Jim Lee is doing. It's easy. <laughs> oh, comics, man. It's easy. Just do what Jim Lee's doing. Um, I was going to talk about uh, setting up screens and stuff. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that next time. Um, I think we're going to, we're going to stop for now because uh, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little little bit wiped. (laughs) I, uh, in addition to all the PC uh, stuff that we, that I've been going through, um, my dog is, is actually really sick. So uh, it's been tough getting, uh, hitting deadlines. I've been kind of like half distracted and I don't mean to like bring everybody down, but so that's also part of why we were on hiatus for a while. Uh, so with that in mind, um, yeah, I know, I know it's rough. He's, he's getting old and like my fiance and I are both kind of like emotionally preparing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a sweetheart. We're going to, we're, we're figuring it out. We're figuring out how to, how to, how to handle everything, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, has, I don't want to, I don't know, go too, too into detail. I don't want to think about it, but for now, for today, I think we're done, but I'm going to be back, uh, later this week. Uh, either you feel free, you got a dog. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. Um, so we're going to be back, uh, back on the regular schedule. Um, I'm going to be back. Uh, what's today? Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. Um, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be finishing this up. What you're looking at right now, this guy, this guy right up here. Look at, look at him. Look at him. I'm going to caress his face. We're ready for you. We're ready for you. Winter soldier. Don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. We're going to, we're going to, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Giant light hands. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to be, we're going to be finishing off the Declan's winter soldier, um, in the next, uh, day or two, uh, Thursday or Friday, whenever I stream next, probably Friday. Um, it's already weird. Oh no. <laughs> it, it started weird. Let's be honest. The second I put on this glove, it started weird. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And, and, we're going to be going back to our Curse of the Iron Chef. Uh, we're going to be doing that this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Um, during the afternoon, we're gonna I'm going to start doing page breakdowns, which is uh, terrifying. And I'm not sure I'm going to be great at it, but you'll be there, stream. You'll be there, chat. You guys? You guys going to be there? <laughs> um. And then uh, we might do a little bonus stream this weekend. Uh, the Boyks and I might play some Sea of Thieves. Uh, we might hop on a boat and try to try to be pirates. So we'll see what happens. Um, you're <laughs> quitting as a colorist and learning to be a millennial. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, thank you for, for joining me. Thank you for not abandoning the stream after 20 days hiatus. I know it was it was uh, long, but I wanted to put out a quality product, and I was still getting used to everything. So thank you for being here. And um, I'll see you Thursday or Friday, and we'll finish off uh, Bucky here. All right. Thanks, guys. Keep making comics. <laughs>